Hey guys, it's Maddie and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making muffins and talking about dairy cows. If you don't know, I work at a dairy barn milking about 150 cows in a parlor and I wanted to kind of go into my job a little bit and tell you about dairy cows, some facts about them. We're gonna be making banana chocolate chip muffins while I do that. I will leave the full recipe down below because I don't know how much I'm going to be talking about it, but anyways, let's get right into it. So as I explain about some of the things I'm talking about, I'll put pictures up on the screen so you can reference them because I don't know how many of you actually know a lot about cows, but anyways. So there are two main types of dairy cows that are milked for their milk, obviously. And the first being Holsteins, and you can have black and white, and which is the iconic dairy cow. There are also red and white, which is a brown, but they're called red because it's not like a true brown. And we have majority black and white, and I think we have about four or five red and white Holsteins. And Jersey cows, they are the cute little tan and black cows. They are my favorite, they're so cute. They have very big personalities. They're kind of like goofy and just like, they're very nosy and like to get into a lot of things. And we have one Jersey cow. They also produce a lot less milk because they are shorter and they have a, fat, a higher fat content in their milk as well. I'm just adding four ripe bananas to a bowl. And Holsteins make up about 90% of the cows that are used for milk consumption. Also, all of this is just my own experience. So if you have experienced something different or have a differing opinion, I respect that. And please let me know in the comments, but don't come for me and don't like give me shit or anything. I'm just trying to put information out there. And as always, do your research. Don't take what I'm saying for 100% truth. Like I did fact check and back up a lot of what I'm saying with research, but do your own as well before you form any kind of opinion. I'm gonna add two thirds cup of sugar to my bananas. So the lactation cycle for a cow can be made up of about six different stages. The first being the pre-calving. So this is the three weeks leading up to when the cow is going to give birth to her calf. And here you're just, like supplying extra nutrients to her, making sure the cow is comfortable and has like a nice spot to give birth because the birthing window is like, it's a wide range. They can give birth like very early or late. Usually they're early, sometimes they go over, but more often than not, they give birth before their due date. Like we just had a cow yesterday calve and she was 10 days early. Stage two is the post calving. So right after she gives birth and the first milking after the birth of the calf is really important because that milk is known as colostrum and it has a lot of nutrients that benefit the calf and ensure that they get off on the right start. It is very fatty, this milk, and it won't be white. It's usually like a yellow or off-white color, and that's because of the fat contents and the nutrients that are vital for the calf to survive and to thrive. Cows are very resilient and bounce back more often than not right away after calving, and for the most part, they can do it all on their own. They don't need too much assistance or interference from the worker or like from the farmer. They can kind of, they're very self-sufficient animals. And then stages three to five, I'm just kind of grouping together and that is the lactation, their peak. So the lactation kind of follows like a curve, starts out higher and then kind of slowly tapers off. And once it tapers off, they go into what's known, or they become a dry cow and they're off for about two months and they don't get milked at all. They just kind of live life recovering from giving birth and from being milked and just have some downtime. So she just gets to enjoy living her life while she recuperates, eating, getting fat, loving their life. So that being said, moral of that is that cows are not milked 365 days of the year. They go through phases and cycles known as the lactation cycle. And it's kind of like customized to the cow. Like you kind of have to pay attention to how the cow is doing and handling things and make a decision based off of that. And we do pay very close attention to how the cow's doing her milk production and things like that to ensure that they are happy because, because a happy cow produces good milk, good quality milk, and that is very, very important. And the production ranges, like we measure ours in liters. So at our barn, like 
the production of a cow can range from like seven liters to up to like 30 plus liters and they're milked twice a day and that being said when i say a range from seven to 30 that is for one milking so in a day they can like produce anywhere from like 20 to 60 liters of milk there are a lot of factors that go into how much milk a cow will produce like their age how big they are like their height their weight their health their breed, things like that. There are a ton of factors. And that being said, the quality, I don't wanna say quality because all of the cows have to meet a certain level of quality of milk for it to be like shipped off. But like the, the makeup of their milk is very different. So like I said, Jersey's typically have a higher fat content in their milk versus Holstein's. And dairy farms typically milk two or three times a day. More often than not, it is twice a day and that spans over like a 12 hour period so for us we milk at 5 a.m and then we milk at 4 30 p.m so it's in about a 12 hour interval but if you're milking three times a day it's going to differentiate a little bit i've never worked at a barn that milks three times a day i do know some people who do and i think it's like a morning uh like around noon and then a later evening if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong and similarly to that, if we, we raise our calves on bottles, so they don't nurse right from the mom, just because we can't monitor how much milk they're actually getting and keeping a better eye on them when they're separated from the mother. So they are fed twice a day as well, same times as milking within a few hours. We give the calf the colostrum right after it is born and that ensures it's going to do well in life. And then after that, they stay on the mother's milk for a few days. Again, it's all dependent on the calf. It is pretty personalized and how they're doing. And then they will be transitioned to formula. I'm going to add an egg to my banana and sugar mixture. Ironically enough, we're talking about dairy, but there is actually no dairy. Oh, there's butter in this, but there's no milk or anything in these muffins. There are several different milking systems and setups. So there's like a herringbone parlor, which is what I milk in. It's a double 10. So 10 cows on the right, 10 cows on the left. There is Thai stall and there is a rotary parlor. We're gonna move on to the dry ingredients. So a cup and a half of flour. So a Thai stall barn, the cows live in a stall. It might not be the stall you're thinking of. It's more like open concept. Like there's no walls that divide them. There are like metal railings more so. And they stay in that stall. They live in that stall. They get fed there, got automatic waters, things like that. And then the milking unit, like the milker and everything moves to each individual cow they like the milkers go to the cows the cows don't go anywhere except for when they're dried off they'll usually go into a nice big bedded pen and a herringbone parlor like i said where i'm where i work so i stand in the middle of it and the milkers are all attached along a wall and then the cows come in to me they get milked the little gate bar type thing swings open and then the cows leave out the front so they come in the back stand there on like an angle the milkers are underneath the cow and then once they're done bar swings up and then the cows leave so the cows come to me milkers don't move they are attached and a permanent part of the parlor and then for that the cows actually live in free stalls and are bedded on sand whereas in tie stalls they're usually bedded on straw but um, in a free stall, they have access to walk up and down an alleyway and then they have stalls in the middle that are bedded on sand and then they get fed on the outside. So we have two groups we milk in. So there are two different groups of penning and free stalls. So then there's one big alleyway down the middle, feed gets pushed up along the sides and then on either side are rows and rows of stalls and it's called a free stall because they're free to move in and out as they please and go where they want and then we have two separate pens for heifers who are going to calve bedded on straw and then another pen for the cows and i think this is an important part a heifer is a cow well obviously it's a cow but it's a cow who has not given birth yet or has only had one calving, like has only given birth to one cow. And then once they give birth to their second calf, then they move into a cow category. So a heifer is a young cow. And then a rotary parlor, I am not familiar with at all. I know of two farmers who have them, 
but it's like a big circle rotating platform that the cow comes on and the milker's underneath of them. Milker gets put on and then they kind of like do a big 360 circle and then once they get back to their starting point, I think they're free to leave. I'm not really sure, so please don't take my word for it. I don't know much about them at all. They're still like not new, but fairly recent and not commonly used where I am. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of both baking soda and baking powder. So now we'll move on to the actual milking process. And before a milker can be put on, we use a pre-dip, a liquid iodine solution, which cleans and sanitizes the teat. Make sure there's no like manure on there, no sand. This also allows us to like get a good look at their udder and see if it's like healthy, if it's in good condition no cuts, scrapes, anything like that. And that has to sit on for a, like about a minute or so just so it can really clean it and make sure it's like sanitary and not dirty because that not only causes harm to the cow but you don't want dirty things going into the tank obviously because that's gonna be human consumption. <laughs> Once the pre-dip has sat on the teat, that is what the base of the udder is called, like the little drop downs, those are the teats and cows have four of them, if you didn't know. Sometimes they will like have four, but only three produce milk. So then they're known as a three titter. Um, but <laughs> anyways, so once the pre-dip has sat, we will take clean microfiber towels and then wipe it away. I'm gonna add a third cup of butter. And then once it's nice and clean, we put the milker on and it takes anywhere for, like it's usually only a few minutes it takes to completely like milk out a cow. So then once that's done, we will go in with a post dip and that is a thicker liquid that seals up the teat and keeps it clean for a little bit until it like soaks in, keeps it hydrated so they don't get like chapped teats and like no cuts or anything like that. And it seals in at the end because it's kind of exposed. Like obviously the milker is a suction, so it's not hard on them, but it definitely can cause irritation if you don't make sure that it's like fully dipped afterwards with the post dip. Next, I'm going to add in some chocolate chips, no measurements, just pour until you think there's enough. Before we even dip, we do what's called a strip and that's about three to six pulls on the teat to check the milk quality. What we're looking for is mastitis, and that is clumps of milk cells. It kind of looks like cottage cheese, and it's like a sign of either an infection in the udder or some like trauma, like if they bumped their udder, got kicked, anything like that, it'll cause mastitis. And if a cow does have mastitis, we cannot milk them into the tank. It actually gets milked into a separate pail and then we'll dump it out because it's not good. Like it's an infection and you don't want to drink that. And either it will last like a day and go away on its own or we will treat the cow and then we have to milk them into the pail for a little bit longer. We can't ship that milk after, it's like not allowed. I'm going to spoon the batter into my silicone muffin tray. And if a cow does have mastitis, it's really important to clean all of the milking equipment after we use chlorine to make sure it's fully sanitized. It's very heavily regulated what milk is shipped. So any milk you're consuming is like the best and highest quality because farmers can get into a lot of trouble if they ship milk that isn't okay, which obviously like it's going out into the public and that it has to be very strictly regulated. Our milk truck comes every other day. So that is four milkings worth in the tank. And right now we're shipping just under 10,000 liters. So about 5,000 liters produced a day. All cows have ear tags, like a little earring on them. And it has a number that is used in the barn. And there's also like a bigger, longer identification number that is registered with the government. And that number is really important. It allows us to track everything about her and look back into like her lineage, who she's bred by, when she's given birth, who her calves are. Some of them do have like in barn names as well. Something I find really interesting is that if there are a set of twins born and one is a bull calf and one is a heifer calf, so a boy and a girl, the heifer is actually sterile. So she's not able to reproduce and therefore she's kind of seen as an equivalent of a bull calf. Like she will never be able to carry calves herself and will never be able to become pregnant, which is very interesting. And they are called free Martins. These are going to bake in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes and the perfect banana chocolate chip muffins. 
Anyways, thank you so much for hanging with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was so much fun to make and to share a little bit about what I do and a big part of my life. If you did enjoy it, let me know. And I think I might make more like this. Um, there are so many more facts and details I could go into about cows. I could literally talk about it for hours and hours and hours. But anyways, I will see you in my next one. Bye.